shocking absolutely no one, I'm bringing yet another microbrand to my channel. And beware that there are even more coming. I keep thinking I should really mix it up a bit, but the reality is that the combination of affordability, quality and fun is very hard to beat. That said, we are seeing a bit of a shift, I think. Some microbrands are creeping up in price and demanding dollars that will quite easily buy you an Aris, Mido or Hamilton watch. And whilst that's good to see, since we do want our friends to be profitable, I very much appreciate the younger brands that take a chance, keep their margins tight and supply us, the watch people, with fun and affordable options. One such brand is Australia's Watch Corporation's Sea Shade release. This was backed on Kickstarter and after a few delays are now in backers hands and most seem quite pleased with their purchase. Just last second hour, creators of the giant stride and the famous mandala, this is another brand out of Melbourne where I also happen to live. So at least this time organizing a loan of a few watches was rather quick and pain free. So what's the point of reviewing a watch that's already out there backed and complete? Well, this is a team that has a few new things coming and you might even be able to get a sea shade still if you wish since at last count they do have a spare few so should you get in touch with the team let's find out if you like what you see here i'd really appreciate a like and subscribe it just means that more people come across these videos and it's very much appreciated thank you I think we can all agree that this is a handsome design. I'm particularly taken by the white and orange combo here, so I'll spend most of my review talking about this one. This was a combination of colors that was unique to Kickstarter backers, and I've not seen too many out there in the wild. To me, there are a lot of obvious influences here, but it's individual enough to stand on its own two lugs. The applied indices are super legible, and the 12, 3, 6, and 9 are distinguished from the others with no line through the loom section. The loom, by the way, is very good, which I'll come back to, obviously. The attractive logo is also applied and very crisp against this white background. Moving down to the model name printed at just above the sixth position of sea shade and water resistance, it's crisp and clear without being too overbearing. Overall, I like this style. I tend to gravitate towards no numerals and no dates, so this is really up my alley. The sapphire crystal has four layers of anti-reflective coating and does its job well enough. Using a flat crystal makes sense on such a robust and totalitarian dive watch. The 120 click bezel is also attractive with its black, white and orange highlights. The white block that sits underneath the printed seconds are loomed and so is the triangle marking zero, but only just. The loom is surprisingly weak on this loom triangle, which is not ideal on a dive watch to say the least. They are after all supposed to indicate what means you went underwater. But I know that my models here are early versions, so hopefully the production models have been improved in this area. The feel of this bezel is quite good, but there is back play for sure. That said, all my three watches line up to the 12 position, and that's really the most important thing, I think. The grip is fairly chunky and easy to get a solid hold on, but I think it would be a challenge with wet hands, so set it before you enter the water, I'd say. Before we move on to the case as a whole, let's talk sizes. The bezel is about 42 millimeters, and sits on top of a case that's 40.5 millimeters in diameter. I measured a height at 13 millimeters and lug to lug at 48 millimeters. Lug width is 22 millimeters. The case is really cool to me. There's no getting away from the fact that those brutal angles on the lugs scream zin to me, and that's absolutely fine. The vertical brushing looks good to me, and even though there was one aspect that was in discussion to be changed, I like it the way it is. The case is fairly sharp underneath in some areas. Not so sharp as the scratcher's skin, of course, but there's a steely edge running all around the back of the case. There is an anti-scratch coating applied to the entire watch case, so it should look pristine for years to come. 
The signed screw down crown contributes to the 300 meters water resistance and is again very easy to grip and manipulate. The lack of crown guards makes this a lot easier of course. There is a ghost position since there's no date rule to manipulate but that's all okay with me. Flipping the watch over we get a nice seahorse motif and print that specifies that within we have the Salita SW200. It's specifically mentioned that it's been regulated to four positions and during my time of wearing the watch it's run well within the specs of the Salita movement. This might be a good time to talk price. For your 575 Australian dollars, you get a scratch resistant watch with a Swiss Salita movement, a stainless steel bracelet, a two piece NATO strap, a silicon strap, a two slot travel case, a microfiber cloth, and a two year warranty card. You cannot argue with the value here. In fact, I can't see how they can keep this up, but if they can, great for us. One small addition I would have loved to see is drilled lugs. It's just so much easier to change straps when you do, particularly when you're as clumsy as me. All the straps and the bracelet with his ratcheting clasps have logos on the buckle and are across the board quality options. I'm again particularly fond of this silicon strap that's super comfortable to wear and thanks to its patterns on the skin side won't be too sweaty to wear in the hot summers down under. It just complements this white and orange model so well and it's easily my favourite. If you do want to check out the bracelet in more details, may I recommend Peter's excellent review linked up on the screen now. As mentioned, the loom is pretty good. Let's have a look. I've seen quite a few of these watches land in the owner's hands, proudly displayed on the League of Microbrands Facebook page and the odd Instagram post if you're lucky enough to not get served non-stop garbage these days on Insta. Yes, there was some waiting and frustrating lack of updates, which definitely upset backers. You know, the usual Kickstarter issue. But I know now that Vios has some help these days, and I think that future campaigns and releases should go a lot smoother. I'm definitely impressed by a watch that's both attractive, well-made and awesome value for money. It is of course on the larger side and it will be interesting to see what this design language would look like if applied to other watch designs. Let's hope we get to find out in the near future. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. <music>